Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here, and for some reason, I just decided it would be fun to review all the MasterChef Junior seasons, because it's a very light show, and it's fun to take a break from the X-Files, that, you know, very thick, heavy show and watch this kind of light and friendly show for the most part. And this is season two that I'll be reviewing. I'm going to review all the seasons, even ones that I've watched before. I'm going to have to go back and re-watch them again so that I can give you my honest opinions. And in general, I think that season two is probably... I used to think that season five... Because I, I only saw before 1, 5, 6, 7, and I think this season. And so I, I, I always thought that season 5 was the best. Uh, but I really think now that I've seen the entire season, I think that season 2 is the best. It has a great group of kids, and they're very friendly, and they all like each other. And the judges are all very nice, and... You know, it's such a better, it, it's, it really is, the only part I don't like is still getting rid of the two people an episode and having it only be seven episodes. I don't like that because I think it does a disservice to the kids there. You know, the fact that two people have to go home, I think that that's slightly unfair, especially since now. They don't do that anymore. And so those kids who were in the earlier seasons, they can look back and say, oh shit, like I was done really uh, an unfair an unfair thing because now maybe I would have been able to stay because they would have said, oh, we'll just send that one kid home. We won't send you home. So I think that kind of sucks. But still, like, this is really the prime example of what this show should be. I really loved the season. I thought it was very, very nice. And for starters, it had a, it had a big emphasis on desserts. And I love that because desserts are a huge weakness for chefs. And even this new season kind of exposes that, season eight it kind of exposes that you have these chefs and they they can make meat and they can make potatoes but they can't make any you know they can't make tiramisu they can't make a layer cake you saw that in season 1 you know with the the whole thing with Alexander where he failed to make a layer cake worthy of master chef anything and i so i love the emphasis on desserts I thought that that was a, a fantastic thing to do uh, to change up the season. It's just too bad that it's only seven episodes, so it feels slightly overpowering in terms of the focus on desserts. Like, it's really weird. Like, I like it, but I don't at the same time because I think that there should be, like, an equal thing where, like, maybe... One episode they do entrees, one episode they do desserts, and they kind of switch back and forth. Or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Still, I really like the season. And the funny thing is, is that doing the dessert emphasis actually really paid off, because in the finale, both of the finalists had fantastic desserts. You had this... uh Lemon man man madelines. I don't. I can't remember what these fucking things are called. Cookies. These lemon cookies with some goat cheese and blueberry compote, and that looked really good. Probably not my first choice for a dessert, but still, it looked really good. It looked really professional, and I gotta say, Samuel's passion fruit dessert, like, looks so good. Like, I thought, this that might have been, like, my favorite dish I saw the whole season. Like, I thought, that's the thing I want to make and eat, like, right now. Because it, it looks so, like, uh, refreshing, and it looks so, like, comforting. Like, just dig your fork into this, like, 
pudding in this glass and you know oh that looked really good <laughs> and I wonder if they had had if they would have had good desserts if they weren't training so hard earlier on in the season of making desserts and what else is there to say there's so many see that's another thing I really wish that I had notes while reviewing a show like this because there's so there's so many names there's so many different challenges okay well let's talk about the greatest challenge in MasterChef Junior history it starts off where the kids have to make sunny side up eggs they have to make as many sunny side up eggs as possible and after that there's a twist where the number of eggs that they made that were good and were acceptable are the number of is the number of ingredients that each chef is going to have to use in their final dish and i thought that was a fantastic idea and it led to one of the greatest moments in MasterChef Junior where the youngest girl, Abby, I kind of looked at her as like a joke at first because she was this goofy little kid. And, you know, I kind of thought, oh, she's like a goofball type of character. But then she she only had two ingredients that she had to work with. And she made like an incredible dish with salmon and then the asparagus five ways, and that was really impressive, and I was like, wow, see, I, none of the chefs from the newest season would probably be able to do that, honestly, and so I, I thought that was really impressive, and there was another great challenge with making cream pies. I thought that that was really cool because Honestly, I've never even thought about cream pies before. Like I've ne- <laughs> the, the, I've never th- <laughs> I've I've never had a cream pie before. <laughs> I'm <laughs> But they all looked pretty good. I mean, they all had these like citrusy type of flavors and I I thought I'd like a cream pie right now <laughs> okay no I'm being serious though like I like that challenge I thought that that was good and I also have to say that I really think that Graham is the best judge I think that he I do like Gordon a lot more than I lead on in these reviews. It's just that over over a lot of the course of watching these series, is you kind of get a little bit of the feeling that he has an ego issue. Uh, although he does have an ego issue, I think I still really like him, and I think that he really tries to help the contestants. And there were numerous instances in this whole season where he directly himself comes over and helps people so does Graham uh, I don't think that Joe does of course uh, I mean uh, Joe is like a he is like a mixed bag you know what he's like you, you know when you make popcorn well of course they probably don't make popcorn because that's too pedestrian for them as Lasamiel says this season he says I I can make a fine dish even with pedestrian ingredients. Uh, anyways, we'll, we'll talk about Samuel. Uh, we'll, we'll talk all about Samuel. Uh, believe me. Because, you know, they want you to anyway. Like, that was the goal of the season was like, here's, the, oh, okay, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already talking too much about Samuel. Uh, but Joe is like, if you make popcorn and then you are disappointed because it doesn't it doesn't really look like it's popped all the way it looks like it's kind of half popped and half not and you're eating the popcorn and all of a sudden there are these hard pieces that you know they could probably crack your teeth because they're not fully popped pieces and you kind of have to watch out for those so that you don't like bite down really hard on them uh, and break your teeth and honestly, like, that's what Joe is. Like, he has good qualities about him. 
but there's always these uh, rocky qualities that that come through and that you have to watch out for. But I really think that uh, Graham is the best judge for the MasterChef Junior Series. I think that he's really good with the kids and that he's he's definitely the best one. And so I, I really kind of wish that he had, he had just been the main judge or something. Like, seriously, I think that, uh, that, that it would be, I don't know, I don't know what effect it would have on the show necessarily, but I don't know. And then, let's see, what else? Well, let's talk about Samuel. <laughs> I, I'm sounding like I hate him, but I don't. I don't really hate anyone this season. That's another thing, is that usually in any of these cooking shows, I'll always hate someone. I'll hate them and say, Ugh. Uh, you know, you got Troy from season one, you got Mafia Dom from season eight, uh, season five, you had the kid who fucking, he made, he took a, a fresh swordfish and put it in a blender at home. And he he gave that to his mom. <laughs> that was I can't wait to get to that. That was so funny. Oh, 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 oh. and then of course you have Kwani, uh, who made the homemade maple syrup using brown sugar and water. And of course it wasn't Kwani's fault that he got to the finale. <laughs> like it was the judges' faults. <laughs> like. He was clearly not good enough to be in the finale. Uh, you know, it seemed like he was a really good baker and he was really good with desserts, but he wasn't really that good with anything else. And so uh, so I kind of ended up hating him, uh, even though I, I don't think that he's bad or anything. I just think that the judges really did a disservice to all the other contestants by it throwing them out and keeping Kwani. And, yeah, you know, you always have that one contestant that you hate. I don't have that for season two. I really like everyone. I think that everyone is very nice. And so I gotta say, like, that's pretty good. The only thing I'll say is that there are a few contestants who I would call, I would label as overrated. And the first one, let's talk about Una. Una! Okay, you, you got this girl named Una! And, she, you know, she's very nice, and she, she seems like she likes to cook. But she, it got to the point where she would make these mistakes, and then other people would get sent home, even though she clearly had the worst mistakes. And it was another instance, like with season one, where they kept that, that that girl from New Jersey and it felt like you know why are they keeping her there like you know these other people they're not making mistakes as bad as her it was the same thing for Una like she was pretty overrated at the same time she did end up redeeming herself and that'll be that'll be the saddest part that was the worst part of the season once again the restaurant episode is the worst episode of the seasons so I gotta say like maybe restaurant takeover episodes aren't very good uh, maybe they're <sighs> I don't know I don't really know what else you could do though because I understand that you know they want to give these kids the feeling of working at a restaurant and so it's pretty cool that they get to do that like it would be like if if they made a filmmaking master show and then there would be an episode where they got to actually make a movie and they got to like use Hollywood stars who would volunteer to help the filmmakers on the show you know that'd be pretty cool honestly you know probably Amber Turd would be number one to volunteer <laughs> because nobody else is gonna hire that bitch <laughs> But yeah, that's what it reminds me of. And so I understand what they're trying to do. However, it was once again, it, it just stands out like a sore thumb. But we'll get to that. Then you have Samuel. Samuel is 
Samuel. From the very moment that, that he steps into the kitchen, he is overrated. And it's clear that the casting director, and I'm not blaming the kid Samuel. I'm blaming the casting directors because they clearly saw this kid. They said, he's a chubby kid with, with brunette hair. And he has a tendency for making French dishes. In fact, he wants to have a restaurant called La Samuel. <laughs> and it's clear that he that they wanted to just have Alexander too. And that he was Alexander of season two. And it felt like that every single fucking episode. Making these sushi foo foo items. Susie Fu Susie Fufu dishes that were not really that great. You know, a lot of them had problems and it felt like just God, this guy's the most overrated chef in history. Oh, overrated kid chef in history, I should say. And it became clear near the end that they wanted these certain chefs to advance and then they wanted to kick everyone else off. And that's, that was unfortunate, was that towards the end, it had a feeling of contrivance. Because then there was another contestant named Sean, and he was a very, very good contestant. And I thought for sure that it would be him versus Abby, or him versus uh, maybe Logan. <laughs> and... But yeah, Sean was really good, and he, he, he won tons of challenges, and he destroyed people. He only ever made, like, a couple of mistakes. And then we get, we get to the restaurant challenge. You have the red team, which had uh, Adea. She was also a really good chef, by the way, and, and she did not deserve to go home in the semifinal. And we'll talk about that, too. You had her... Oh, wait, yeah, she did. Never mind. I, uh, there was one element about her dish that they kind of, they didn't really emphasize it. And she she burned garlic. And so th the whole dish tasted like burnt garlic. And she also had the advantage for that round. So it was kind of embarrassing. Uh, still, she was a pr really good chef. So it was her, Abby... Who, by the way, Abby was really good. Like, she was definitely a standout of the season and of the series. Because of the fact that everyone underestimated her. And it was funny because the one person who didn't underestimate her was Adea. And guess what? Abby ended up going home for that. And we'll talk about that. And then, of course, Logan. And on the other side, on the blue team... You had Samuel as the leader, of course. And then, and then they had Sean and Una. And it started off where the blue team was doing terribly. And the red team had a couple of issues, too. And that's where it kind of started to feel contrived. Because at that point, Gordon pulled Logan aside. And he... he sat him down next to him and they had this like little chit chat like this little inspirational chit chat that I felt like okay this is obviously Gordon having a chat with the kid who's gonna be the winner you know he's the kid that that Gordon likes he's the kid who kind of looks like Gordon kind of acts like Gordon he's this mild-mannered good boy you know he's the average Joe and so he's probably going to be the one to win. And then on uh, and the, the blue team, though, the blue team destroyed the red team near the end. And the blue team actually finished, like, I don't know, like 30 minutes before the red team finished. Like, they really, uh, they bounced back, which is something that, I'll talk about because Gordon really emphasizes the importance of doing that and how that really makes or breaks whether you stay in the competitions. And he doesn't really follow that guideline here, which was disappointing to say the least. 
And then on the red team, they got really trashed toward the end. And it was looking like, oh, these guys. Like, I was going to say, like, oh, they're really good. No, they're not. They did they didn't do a very good job as a team, honestly. Like, they started off pretty good, and I think they're all good individually. But towards the end, they got really, really bad. And and so, you have the blue team, which bounced back. And then you have the red team, which ended terribly. Guess who goes home? The blue team, except for Samuel, of course. Because he's Alexander, too. Well, he's really not, but that's what they think he is. So I thought that that was really unfair. You know, you had Sean, and he did a really good job cooking filet mignons, cooking perfect steaks the whole fucking time. And then you had Una, who ended up bouncing back. And so the fact that they redeemed themselves in the episode, they redeemed themselves, they came back, and gave a good performance by the end. And the fact that the message that they received from that was, you're going home, you're out. The people who are going to stay are the people who ended terribly. And the people who, they started out good, but they ended terribly. And I thought, wow, that's really shitty. You know, they were clearly just playing favorites and being biased because they wanted to contrive who won in the ending. And that's where we get to the semifinal where they had this really cool advantage that Adea got where she got to pick refrigerators full of ingredients after a salmon challenge. And each refrigerator had a number, a different number of ingredients. And she knew that Abby could do a lot with a little since she had two ingredients and she destroyed them. In fact, it was a salmon meal too. So that's double trouble with her, uh, this semifinal. And so she did the smart thing and she picked the, the refrigerator with a hundred ingredients. And so it was this really nice reversal of what she did earlier in the season with few ingredients. And what ended up happening was she got confused. She kept on getting more and more ingredients. And she she crashed and burned. And it was a really cool thing to watch because it was the only time the whole season where somebody actually took her seriously as a contestant and a competitor. And the only time where, uh, where they really fought her. Uh, the rest of the season, she kind of got to you know, have a cakewalk, except for the the whole two ingredients thing, which she ended up overcoming. And then Adea, of course, she did a really good job. The only bad thing was she burnt her garlic. But then Samuel, his salmon was terrible, and he hardly even gave them any salmon. It was pretty bad, but he got to stay for the finals because he's Alexander, too. And then Logan, of course, Logan did a good job. And I thought it was interesting that he poached the salmon in olive oil because Grayson does that in the semifinal in season eight. And so I think that Grayson got that idea from season two. I guarantee. They didn't even mention it, too. Like, it's so weird. Like, it just so happens that in the semifinal episode two seasons that uh, these competitors do this very weird thing that I never even heard of until watching this show, the poached salmon and olive oil. Like, I've never heard of that until uh, this year. And so the fact that you have those two rare occurrences, it's like, it's so weird they didn't, like, talk about that, at least. But anyway, the finale seemed very contrived. Very contrived. And that was where the show got less good. Because the finale, although it was entertaining, and I and I, I did like Logan winning. Because he's a very nice kid. And he was very humble. And he wasn't full of himself. And, you know, it, he deserved it. He deserved to win. 
just like, you know, if Sean was in the finale, he would have deserved to win. Uh, but it, it felt really contrived because you had the good boy Logan versus the bad boy Samuel. You know, you had the kid, you had the mild-mannered Logan versus Samuel who he bad other contestants he bad mouths their food. He he's full of himself. He's he's you know has a really inflated ego, which I which I don't blame him because that's what they've that's what they've given him. He's not terrible, but you know it's a very clear thing where you have a hero and a villain. It's like wrestling. It's like WWE. Uh, so I thought that that was pretty bad. But they ended up both doing pretty good meals. I would say that probably Logan had the better appetizer. And then for the entree, I really can't say because I've never had either of those dishes. Never have had salt-baked bronzini. And I've never had arctic char like that. I don't think I've ever had arctic char in general. And, the, and so I really don't know. Probably Samuel. And then the dessert, uh, Samuel's clearly was better. So Logan won. And I was happy with the season. There were a couple of those issues that I had, though. And I would say that, though, that this is definitely the best season. Clearly, uh, oh, I forgot to talk about the funniest thing. <laughs> See, this is why I wish I had notes, because... I feel like a spirit just like injected that memory into my brain so that I could, you know, quickly pull that out and tell you guys there's this moment earlier on in the season where Gordon brings his mom in and it's something, it was so unexpected. I almost about my jaw dropped to the floor <laughs> because she goes up, I think she goes up to Una or she goes up to this other girl, I think Natalie was her name, she had a, a dessert weakness. She could not make any good dessert, unfortunately. And uh, I think her cream pie sent her home. <laughs> and so uh, Gordon's mom went up to one of them, I can't remember, and she, she asks her if she has a boyfriend. And I thought, what the fuck? Because I thought it was so weird, like, was this planned ahead of time? Like, was this a callback to season one, where Gordon does that in the first episode to that New Jersey girl? Or was that, is it, does it, like, run in the family, where they, they like to ask people about, like, hey, do you have a boyfriend? Hey, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> And then Gordon actually starts suggest suggesting that Una or Natalie should date his son Jack. And then he started saying Jack and blank, Jack and blank, Jack and blank. And, and, and it was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what the, what, like, what is this? Like, what, <laughs> it's just really, really weird. And so I thought that that was hilarious. I mean, that was just so shocking that it felt like in Home Alone 2 where they're building off of jokes from the first movie. And so I really wonder if that was like planned ahead of time uh, because it just felt too hilarious to be completely true. Overall, I would rate the season. I really can't rate it in terms of food because... It's a food show. Like, I don't know, like, how would I rate, like, a competition food show in terms of food? I really don't think that I can. I would give this show, this season, an A-. minus. I would say that it is the perfect version of what the show should be. Uh, although they should definitely eliminate one person an episode and have, I guess, double the episodes. 14 episodes. Other than that, it's a, it's a very, very good show. And it has a lot of great, it's very inspirational for kids. And it's got a lot of funny moments for adults too. And it's got a lot of great looking food. That's another thing. Like, 
you look at all these dishes and you wish, oh, I wish I could be there so that I could eat all this food that they're wasting by throwing it in the trash. You know, I wish I could take that plate of, or that it, that glass of that passion fruit dessert that they probably just wasted after the finale was over. You know, like, I really want to do that. Uh, so anyways, please like this video, comment, tell me what you thought about Season 2, and what do you think about cream pies? Like, what's your favorite type of cream pie? <laughs> oh, wait a second, there's banana cream pie. I have had banana cream pie before. Okay, banana cream pie is fantastic. Uh, and I guess chocolate... No chocolate cream pie is that do that do they call it a chocolate cream pie or do they just call it a chocolate pie i don't know oh yeah coconut cream this one time safi and i we we got the andy griffith cookbook and we cooked the coconut cream pie and it was horrible it was probably one of the worst desserts i've ever eaten and so we actually ended up throwing it out because it was so gross but yeah, tell me what you think about cream pies. And, you know, how would you rank cream pies from uh, worst to best? And then please subscribe. <laughs> please subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more MasterChef Junior reviews. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon.